Hi everyone, thank you for watching this. Gustave Flaubert, the greatest 19th century French novelist, is credited for pioneering a literary movement that today we call realism. Known as a master of style in literature and his best known novel, Madame Bovary is considered one of the best French novels of all time. In this video, I'll briefly look at Flaubert's life, then talk about his novels, style of writing, and life's philosophy and six lessons you can learn from him. Biography Gustave Flaubert was born in 1821, in the same year as the Russian great novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky was born. Here's another interesting commonality between the two. Both died a year apart, Flaubert in 1880 and Dostoevsky in 1881. Both novelists suffer from epilepsy, a very common illness among many great authors. Flaubert grew up in the north of France in a middle-class family. He went to university to study law, but his epilepsy made it difficult, so just like Tolstoy, he never finished his degree. While the Russian writers Tolstoy, Dostoevsky and Turgenev were fascinated by Europe and traveled to France, Flaubert, however, traveled to Greece, Turkey and Egypt, which became the setting for some of his novels like Salambo and The Temptation of St. Anthony, both set in North Africa. Later in life, he had to deal with the German soldiers who occupied his town and even his home. Speaking of Germans, Flaubert was influenced by the pessimist German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer especially his philosophy that life is nothing but suffering. This pessimism runs through his novels, Flaubert never married and had no children. Perhaps it was the influence of Schopenhauer saying that he didn't want to inflict the pain of existence onto another person. Quote, the idea of bringing someone into the world fills me with horror. I would curse myself if I were a father. A son of mine? Oh no, no, no. May my entire flesh perish and may I transmit to no one the aggravations and the disgrace of existence. Wow. Speaking of pessimism, or Flaubert didn't want to have sleepless nights and the responsibility of raising a child. Dostoevsky and Tolstoy's response to the pessimism was religion and Russian simple life. But Flaubert was not religious, so he had to deal with the pessimism by writing. Instead of kids, he found art as his savior. Flaubert treated writing his novel just like raising kids. It takes years for kids to grow up and Flaubert's novels were no different. He spent many, many years writing one novel. I think having kids is a massive hindrance to writing. I believe the reason gay people tend to be more creative is the fact that they put all their eggs in one basket. With no chance of biological legacy, everything is on the line, so it forces you to leave an artistic legacy. Whether it's conscious or subconscious, we all want to have a legacy. For some it's kids, but for others it's their art, business or a building. Flaubert wrote novels. After the publication of Madame Bovary, the French prosecutors in 1857 took Flaubert to court on charges of obscenity and moral corruption. Madame Bovary centers on a married woman who has affairs with two men. But lucky for Flaubert that it was France, the land of Egalité, Liberté and Fraternité. The case was dismissed, but the publicity made the novel bestseller. Today Flaubert is known for his literary style and considered the founding father of realism, a literary movement that focuses on telling the objective reality as it is without judging people. I discussed this in my video on Ivan Turgenev, Flaubert's close friend. But as it happened, Flaubert also destroyed realism with his last but unfinished novel, Beauvoir and Pécochet, in which he showed that it's near impossible for us to know reality. Flaubert's perfectionist style is loved by many authors. He has also made it into the mainstream media. The children's TV show Sesame Street had a character named after him, Flaubert, who was a waitress then a writer. Novels Flaubert's most famous novel is Madame Bovary, which I did dedicated a whole video to, so I will not talk about it too much here. It was published in 1856 when Flaubert was about 35 years old. Not only it revolutionized his own career, but it shook up literature. He introduced Emma Bovary, a free spree married woman in search of romantic adventures, shopping sprees, and ultimately self-destruction. If men could self-destruct, so could women. After the fame of Madame Bovary, Flaubert decided to write something bigger. 
Salambo, published in 1862, is a historical novel. It was successful at the time, mostly because of the publicity of Madame Bovary, but it hasn't aged well. I think Flaubert realized that he had to return to his realism, so in 1869 he published his other masterpiece, but with a really terrible title, Sentimental Education. The novel is as good as Madame Bovary in its literary style and language, but the title is extremely generic. Unlike Bovary, which was set in the provinces, sentimental education is set in Paris during 1848 revolution, and centers on a young law student, just like Flaubert himself, who fancies one woman, then the next, and finally loses them all. Just like Flaubert himself, the protagonist, in seeking for perfection, he struggles with indecisiveness. A saying that if you go for the best, you end up with nothing, be it a job or love. In my view, Sentimental Education is a better written novel than Madame Bovary, but Bovary has a better story and title. In 1877, Flaubert published a collection of three short stories titled Three Tales, of which A Simple Heart, about a simple girl who judges nobody and trusts everybody, is the best known. In Flaubert's usual pessimism, her goodness is not reciprocated by society, but what's important is that she is okay with that and never changes her ways. In Sentimental Education and Madame Bovary, the protagonist's love is conditional, but Simple Heart, it's unconditional, which only women are capable of. Men are not. She's the opposite of Madame Bovary, she doesn't question things. Flaubert's last novel, Beauvoir and Pécochet, published in 1881, is unfinished. Again, Flaubert's perfectionist approach meant he worked on it for decades without finishing it. Beauvoir and Pécochet is about two mediocre or even losers who search for knowledge and want to know everything. They even read dictionary for pleasure. They are a jack of all trades but masters of none. Again, that saying that if you chase everything, you end up with nothing. Schopenhauer's pessimism is in full display here. Reality is almost unknowable to humans. If Flaubert invented literary realism and Madame Bovary, he killed it in this novel. Beauvoir and Pécochet is absurd, comic, and even nihilistic. Lesson 1. Quality over quantity. Quote, I try to discover in the rumor of forests and waves words that other men could not hear, and I pricked up my ears to listen to the revelation of their harmony. Gustav Flaubert is the greatest example of a novelist who sacrificed quantity for quality. Flaubert's extremely slow writing process meant he often tortured himself over the choice of words. Madame Bovary took him five years to write, sentimental education seven years, and the unfinished novel Beauvoir and Pécochet took 15 years that ultimately killed Flaubert as he obsessed to write a perfect novel. It's important to note that Flaubert grew up reading Balzac an improvising genius who wrote two, three novels a year. Emile Zola did the same, writing like a factory. Flaubert was the opposite, he lacked the natural talent of other writers, but his genius was in hard work. Mario Vargas Llosa, the Peruvian Nobel Prize winner, talks about his own feeling of inadequacy. But learning that Flaubert, the greatest French writer, also was a mediocre talent, he was inspired. Very few writers have the natural talent to write a great novel. It's mostly through hard work, sacrifice, patience, and self-discipline. Whether Flaubert was a victim of perfectionism or suffered obsessive compulsive disorder, he managed to produce some of the greatest works of literature through hard work. Quote, when one does something, one must do it wholly and well. But also remember that Flaubert couldn't finish some of his novels, so sometimes it's best to complete something. Kafka never finished any of his novels. Quality is always important, but finishing the job is also important. I think when you're starting writing, instead of writing one great story a month, write a bad one each day. Once you have mastered the craft, then slow down to focus on the quality. In any field, quantity first, then quality as you improve. A baby doesn't start with a perfect sprint, but with a small step. Today we are bombarded with a pile of low quality stuff online and offline, so to stand out, you have to produce something that has quality. Lesson 2. Be precise with your language. Quote, Human speech is like a cracked kettle in which we tap crude rhythms for bears to dance to, while we long to make music that will melt the stars. Flaubert is perhaps the closest a novelist came to a composer or an artist. 
He treated each word like a musical note, looking for its sound, meaning, cadence, and the overall effect within a sentence. Flaubert was an artist of diligence and attention to details who painstakingly stroked his brush to create the perfect effect or image in the reader's mind. Novelists build palaces with words, structured in a way that creates an image, but most importantly, feeling. Just like an extra note in a song can hinder the experience, Flaubert carefully chose each word to say more with less. Madame Bovary is not a very long novel, but it's so jam-packed with imagery and emotions that not a word seems misplaced. On a deeper level, Flaubert believed language was always inadequate to express human emotions and ideas. It's not a window you can see through, language is more like opaque glass. Quote, it's hard to communicate anything exactly and that's why perfect relationships between people are difficult to find. This is a really deep analysis of how we all fail in communicating our feelings and thoughts perfectly because language is an insufficient tool. This is much harder for the writer whose only tool is language. Instead of giving up, Flaubert chose his words carefully, which was a huge struggle for him. Quote, I'm irritated by my own writing. I'm like a violinist whose ear is true but whose fingers refuse to reproduce precisely the sound he hears within. Marcel Proust imitated Flaubert and his writing to convey feelings with precise words. So use language with purpose, be precise with your words and concise with your sentences, just like Flaubert. Lesson 3. Beauty is created. Quote, there is not a particle of life which does not bear poetry within it. In 1845, Flaubert visited Italy and was fascinated by a painting, so much so that he sat down for four years to write a novel about it, The Temptation of Saint Anthony. In 1849, Flaubert gathered two of his friends and sat down to read the entire novel in the course of four days. Once he had finished, his friends told him it's too vague, too unrealistic, so throw it into the fire. They advised him to look on earth to find beauty in the ordinary instead of searching for unicorns in the heavens. Flaubert listened to his friends. He started writing Madame Bovary, a story set in the mundane provincial France, a kind of story you might read in a newspaper. In fact, Flaubert himself got the idea for writing his novel from a newspaper article about a woman who had had affairs, got addicted to shopping and got herself into a massive debt and then committed suicide. By writing this novel about the everyday, Flaubert invented a new literary movement, realism. Nothing fanciful but commonplace. But Flaubert, the perfectionist, turned this simple tale into an amazing work of art, through hard work and five years of toiling with his words. Instead of searching for beauty in a vague painting, he created it himself. Flaubert, the wordsmith or the literary alchemist, turned base metal into gold. So great writers turn an ordinary story into an extraordinary piece of literature. Quote, you must write for yourself above all. That's your only hope for creating something beautiful. Lesson 4. Artists do not judge. Quote, Stupidity lies in wanting to draw conclusions. One of the most unique features of Madame Bovary was its realism. But what's even more important was that Flaubert didn't judge Emma for her transgressions. Just remember that this was 1850s, 170 years ago. A woman while pursuing romance sleeping with different men wasn't acceptable at the time, and that was the reason Flaubert was taken to court for teaching immorality. Throughout the novel, Flaubert lets Emma make her own decision based on the fantasies she had read about in romantic novels. Emma's imagination is rife with romantic tales, so Flaubert is like a sympathetic parent who likes his kids in equal measure despite their bad choices in life. That level of objectivity was new in literature, something even pure scientists couldn't practice. As I discussed in my video on Flaubert's close friend, Ivan Turgenev, in order to discover the truth, artists must not judge. Quote, the art of writing is the art of discovering what you believe. So have an open mind about the good, the ugly, the sublime and the terrible. Lesson 5. Fiction changes reality. Quote, there is no truth, there is only perception. If one has to characterize the entire body of Flaubert's works, it's about the question of what is reality and how much can we know it. Flaubert is the pioneer of realism, but he is also the destroyer of realism towards the end of his career, especially in his last unfinished novel, Beauvoir and Picochet. 
As I said earlier, he was influenced by Schopenhauer, just like Tolstoy was. Schopenhauer argued that we can never understand reality as it is, but we only know a representation of that reality. In Madame Bovary, Emma's life choices are influenced by the fantasy and romance novels she read as a young woman. She cannot understand reality because her mind is full of lies and fantasies. Emma later reflects on her life and says, everything was a lie. This also reflects Flaubert's own view. In Bovary and Picochet, Flaubert undermines his own realism by saying that reality cannot be known. Two men embark on a journey to know everything and record everything, but fail miserably in every quest. Mass media, social media and advertising are like works of fiction, giving false hopes, exaggerating things and amplifying reality to the point that the more we consume, the less we understand reality. Emma Bovary read a lot of bad fiction to the point that she believed in unicorns. Flaubert preferred quality over quantity. It's not about how much you read, but what you read. Do you know who likes quantity? Capitalists do. The more they publish, the more money they make. So information clarifies reality, but it also obscures it, giving you inflated dreams. Quote, do not read as children do, to amuse yourself, or like the ambitious for the purpose of instruction. No, read in order to live. In other words, don't consume mass media, instead read great works of literature. Lesson 6. Reality always wins. One of Flaubert's most unique techniques is juxtaposition, which is incredibly cinematic. In Madame Bovary, the scene of Emma and her lover having one of the most beautiful moments is juxtaposed with people at the country fair, listening to a boring speech by local politicians, talking in monotone, just like all politicians do. In Sentimental Education, too, a beautiful moment of romantic whispers is juxtaposed with people demonstrating and shouting on the street outside. Flaubert contrasts the inner calm with the outside storm and the outside calm with inner storm. In his novels, he plays with the emotional drama of the individual with the social drama of revolutionary upheavals. Throughout his work, Flaubert contrasts the perfection of a dream with the imperfection of reality. His characters always find it difficult to breach the two, so they remain suspended in this really uncomfortable situation. When they act on their imagined dreams, the consequences are bad, like in Madame Bovary. When they do not act, as is the case in sentimental education, you are left with nothing. So in essence, Flaubert thinks reality always wins, whether you act upon your dreams or not. So be purposeful the way you live, but most importantly, be realistic. To sum up Flaubert's fiction, his characters experience young idealism which is replaced by terrible realism later in life. For some of his characters, the realization comes too late. For example, in Emma Bovary's case. For Frederick, his protagonist in sentimental education, however, he is still alive to ponder over his naivety in love and success. For Flaubert, childhood is an idealized world, almost a bubble, but adulthood is like nature, raw and animalistic reality. I will leave you with this quote. As you get older, the heart sheds its leaves like a tree. You cannot hold out against certain winds. Each day it tears away a few more leaves. And then there are the storms that break off several branches at one go. And while nature's greeneries grow back again in the spring, that of the heart never grows back. It took me hours to read, research, write and produce this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And also if you like, of course, you can buy me a coffee on my coffee page. As always, thank you for watching.